everyone. Today we are going to go over how to provide spot cleaning and distribute enrichment items for our dog kennels. So we have dogs in our kennels that are available for adoption and some that are not yet available for adoption. But when it comes to spot cleaning and enrichment, their status really doesn't matter. They all deserve to have clean and enriched environments. Uh, for the dogs that are available for adoption, providing enrichment is extra important uh, because the enrichment items will help the dogs remain occupied and calm in their kennels, which gives off a better first impression. Uh, when dogs don't have enrichment items to keep them busy in their kennel, they'll oftentimes become bored and start uh, displaying behaviors like barking, jumping, spinning, and those can give a bad first impression to potential adopters that are walking through the rooms. So when it's time to um, spot clean and provide enrichment in the kennels, the very first thing that you're going to want to do, and it's a really important step, is to read all of the signage on the dog's kennel. And you're gonna do that for every single kennel that you work with. So you're gonna look for signs that say uh, things like the dog can't have specific types of bedding, uh, certain types of toys, maybe they're on a special diet and shouldn't be given any treats or have certain types of food items in their enrichment toys. So you wanna make sure you're reading that um, before you decide what to uh, do or put in the kennel. You also wanna to look to see how many dogs are housed in that one kennel. If there's more than one dog housed in the kennel, then you are likely not going to put treats in there or put work to eat enrichment items in there or put uh, even toys in there because there's a concern that the dogs may get in an argument over those uh, valuable items. But if it's just a single dog, then we definitely want to make sure they have multiple types of toys and enrichment items in there. So for this particular kennel, um, this dog is a little on the shy and fearful side. So the dog is already choosing to stay on the opposite end of the kennel from me. So that makes it really easy for me to be able to close the guillotine door and get into the side of the kennel where I need to start the tidying um, process. So all of our kennels here at Escondido campus operate with this guillotine door system that will uh, separate the kennel in half. So this allows us to have the dog on one side and the people going in on the other side not have to interact. That way there's less uh, risk of injury. So we're gonna slowly move up this handle. To close the guillotine door and most of our kennels here um, will start off with a safety latch on them. So you're gonna have to remove that. And that just helps us make sure that the doors don't get accidentally bumped and um, the dogs escape. So you're gonna remove that safety latch and then lift up the kennel to be able to get inside and assess what cleaning we need to do and um, what enrichment items to add. So during morning feeding and cleaning routine, staff and volunteers will work together to provide all of the basics. They'll get their food, their water, their bed, their bedding, and their toys. Uh, but throughout the day, they may need those things freshened up. Uh, the only exception to that is their food. They're not, volunteers are never gonna give out additional uh, food unless uh, specifically asked to do so by staff. So their daily meals are covered. The only food items volunteers are gonna distribute are gonna be in the form of treats or inside enrichment items. So for this particular kennel, I'm looking to see, okay, does the dog have a bed? Yes, it does. Does it have bedding? Yes, it does. Um, is the bedding clean? And sometimes you can tell visually if the bedding is clean. Other times you're gonna have to feel the bedding to see if it's been soiled. If it has been soiled, then you're gonna remove it and put it in the dirty laundry bins in the laundry room. If it hasn't been, then you can just readjust it um, so it's nicely laid out on the bed. Then I'm gonna to look to see if there's any feces or urine on the floor that we need to pick up. It looks like this kennel doesn't have any, uh, but if it did, there's a couple different ways uh, to do the cleanup. So all the supplies that you're gonna need are provided in each individual dog room, but I just have them next to me for this demonstration. So when you're spot cleaning, you'll put gloves on and you will use the doggy waste bags that are provided to pick up any solid stool that's in the kennel. And then if there's any remnants of stool or if there's urine, you have two options. If it's on the lighter side, you can use paper towels to pick that up. Um, if it's on the heavier side or more of a mess, then we'll just use regular towels and then put them in the dirty laundry when we're finished. 
Um, we also have cleaning spray uh, that hangs on the sinks that are in each room. So if the stool or urine needs a little bit of spray to help get it cleaned up, you're welcome to use that. And then once um, we make sure that there's no feces in urine, we're checking the water bowls to make sure that they're topped off. And we have watering cans in each room to be able to do that easily. And then once cleaning is all taken care of, the focus switches to enrichment. So we have different toys that get donated that you can choose from, and we have work to eat enrichment items. Um, so you wanna always, again, keep in mind the signage on the kennel. Was there anything specific that they should or should not have? And you wanna pick out items that are gonna be size appropriate. So we have a lot of large dogs in care. A little stuffed toy like this, or a small little Kong like this, is gonna be a major health hazard for our larger dogs. So we wanna be keeping in mind um, what would be appropriate for that particular dog. So for this little guy that we're working with, almost anything would be safe for him. And different dogs like different types of toys. So when I can, I like to give a variety of things to see what uh, types of toys they prefer. So we've got little plastic speaker guys. Um, we have some of the more plush toys. We typically have rope toys donated. Um, for some of our larger dogs, we have like the really uh, chew-proof, <laughs> uh, chewy items. Um, and then for this dog, the work to eat enrichment item that I'm gonna choose for him is a stuffed Kong. And we have a separate video on how to make Kongs, where to find them, and um, what you can fill them with. This Kong is a little bit large for him, but it, when in doubt, go one size up. So this is gonna be safe for him no matter what. So I'll just throw these in here. They don't have to be on the bed. You could put them on the floor too. It's up to you. And then you're welcome to leave a couple treats for them as well, as long as they're signed, it doesn't say they can't have treats. If you need the dog to move back over to one side of the kennel or to go to the other side of the kennel initially, using treats is helpful for that as well. So once that's all set up, we shut the door. Remember to put the safety clasp back on. And then we're gonna use the guillotine door handle again, slowly pulling that down. So lift the door and allow the dog um, to either have both sides or to come back over to the preferred side, depending on the campus or the dog room. So I think that pretty much covers it on um, spot cleaning and providing enrichment. If you have any questions at all while you're volunteering, please don't hesitate to radio for staff. They would be happy to show you where supplies are kept, help you move a dog from one side of the kennel to the other, answer any questions that you have. So thank you so much for helping our animals and we'll see you soon.